in this video we're going to prove this nice big pretty general theorem involving a solution to a second order differential equation with constant coefficients but non-homogeneous so it's got a forcing function and we're, it's going to be using the ideas of the Laplace transform and the convolution. So let's first recall that if we take the convolution of f and g and then apply the Laplace transform that's the same thing as applying the Laplace transform to f and g and then multiplying. Okay, good. Now let's look at our theorem. So we want to suppose that f is continuous on this interval 0 to infinity and that the Laplace transform of f exists. Then we'll consider this following second order differential equation. So we have ay double prime plus by prime plus cy equals f of t. So that's our forcing function. And we have these initial conditions. So we have y evaluated at 0 is k0 and y prime evaluated at 0 is k1. Then we have the following solution. So we have y is equal to k0 times y1 plus k1 times y2 plus 1 over a where that's the number in front of y double prime and then the convolution of y2 and f. But I haven't told you what y1 and y2 are so let's do that. So y1 and y2 are solutions to the corresponding homogeneous differential equation. So often when you have a non-homogeneous equation, it's really important to find the solutions to the homogeneous equation, and that's true here as well. So the homogeneous equation would be exactly this equation, but with a zero on the right-hand side. So luckily, it, since we have constant coefficients, the technique for doing that is well-known and fairly easy. So y1 and y2 are solutions to that, but they're not any solutions. They're solutions that satisfy these following initial conditions. So y1 evaluated at 0 is 1, and then y1 prime evaluated at 0 is 0, and then finally y2 evaluated at 0 is 0, and y2 prime evaluated at 0 is 1. Okay, so you can think of these kind of like orthogonal unit basis vectors for the solution space of the homogeneous differential equations. Great, so now what we're going to do is start off by taking the Laplace transform of this, using these initial conditions, and then moving forward. So I want to introduce some notation first. So let's set capital Y to be equal to the Laplace transform of little y, and we'll set capital F equal to the Laplace transform of little f. And now what we want to do is take the Laplace transform of both sides of our differential equation. So we'll get the Laplace transform of AY double prime um, plus BY prime plus CY. So that's going to be equal to the Laplace transform of F. Great. So now we're going to use the derivative rule on the Laplace transform, which obviously I don't have enough on the board to um, recall all of the facts, but I'll let you look at one of my previous videos um, to find that derivative rule. So in this case, we're going to get A times S squared capital Y minus um, S times Y of 0 minus Y prime of 0. So that's what we get for the Laplace transform of y double prime. And then we have b, s times y minus y evaluated at 0. So that's what we get for the Laplace transform of y prime. And then finally we have c, capital Y equals capital F. Okay, so now using the initial conditions, I'll let you fill in the gaps, but we can write this as follows. We can write this as AS squared plus BS plus C times capital Y equals um, F plus A times uh, K1 plus K0S and then plus B times K0. K0. Okay, good. And now the next thing I want to do is let's set P of S equal to AS squared plus BS plus C. And notice that's going to allow us to do the following. Now we can write a Y equals F over P of S. And I should say maybe F depends on S as well. And then plus A K1 plus K0 S over P of S and then plus b k0 over p of s. Okay, good. So I'll clean up the board, I'll move this equation up, and then we'll uh, go towards the rest of the proof. 
Okay, so I've moved my equation for capital Y up, and I've actually moved things around a, a little bit. So let's review where we were. We had capital Y is capital F of S over our polynomial P of S, plus K naught times this fraction AS plus B over PS, and then plus K1, and then A over PS. Okay, so now we're going to write down the Laplace transforms of our solutions to our homogeneous parts, y1 and y2, and we're going to use the fact that they're solutions to this differential equation with a zero on one side. So let's do y1 first. So we know a y1 double prime plus b y1 prime plus c y1 equals zero. Now we can take the Laplace transform here, that'll give us A times the Laplace transform of y1 double prime plus B times the Laplace transform of y1 prime plus C times the Laplace transform of y1 and now that's clearly equal to zero. Um, now we can apply the Laplace transform here. Notice in this case we're going to get S squared and then we'll say the Laplace transform of y1 which we'll call that capital Y1 Good, and then minus S times Y1 evaluated at zero minus Y1 prime evaluated at zero. Great, now we'll do the same thing for the next part. So we'll get B times um, S Y1 minus uh, Y1 evaluated at zero. And then finally we get plus C capital Y1 equals zero. And now we know that this part is equal to zero from our initial condition that we've decided for y1. And then this part is one, and then this part is also one. Okay, good. And so now this allows us to solve the following. Capital Y1 can be solved as follows. So this is AS plus B over P of S. And so uh, I'll talk you through that. I won't do all the details, but notice we get AS squared plus BS plus C times capital Y1. And then we're also going to get minus AS minus B. So we can move those minus AS minus B to one side of the equation, divide by P of S, and then we've got it. And then also, similarly, we can write down an equation for capital Y2, in other words, the Laplace transform of little y2, that homogeneous solution, and it turns out that the Laplace transform of capital Y2 is the following, so it is A over P of S. Okay, good. So now what I'll do, I'll take these equations and put them inside this equation, but I'll clean up the board before I do that. Okay, so we just argued that the Laplace transforms of our homogeneous solutions are as follows. We have capital Y1 is AS plus B over PS, capital Y2 is A over PS, which means 1 over PS is 1 over AY2. So now notice we can put those into this equation and get the following. So we'll write capital Y as, so we'll write this 1 over PS as 1 over A, and now we have Y2 times A. F. Great. And then the next thing, we can see that this is plus K0 times Y1. And then finally, this is plus K1 times Y2. And now we're all set to take the inverse Laplace transform. So notice that um, little y will be the inverse Laplace transform of this whole thing. So I'm going to rearrange it a little bit, but notice we'll get k0, the inverse Laplace transform of capital Y1, plus k1, the inverse Laplace transform of capital Y2, and then finally, plus 1 over a, the inverse Laplace transform of y2, um, times F. And now we can use what we know. So the inverse Laplace transform of capital Y1 is little y1. And then the inverse Laplace transform of capital Y2 is little y2. And then we have plus 1 over A. And the inverse Laplace transform of a product, given this formula up here, will be the convolution. So this will be y2 convolution F. So this gives us the solution to our differential equation and finishes the proof of this theorem.